Who are these descendants of Africans who are scattered throughout the world? What are their stories? What did they contribute to global culture? And why don't we know more about them and their stories? The answers lie in the guilty and painful silences surrounding the more than 1,500 years of history of the enslaving of African peoples in distant lands. Aware that ignoring fundamental historic events can be an obstacle to peace and mutual understanding, the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization decided to break the silence on the slave trade and slavery. In 1994, UNESCO created the Slave Route Project to highlight the importance of this tragedy and its implications for the modern world. Central to the work we do are efforts to broaden awareness of the multiple causes and modalities surrounding the transatlantic slave trade as well as slavery in the Indian Ocean and the Mediterranean. Those who forget or deny their history are indeed doomed to repeat it. The slave trades that literally changed the face of the world were not the first great migration out of Africa. The first African diaspora was the migration of the ancestors of all of humankind who 100 to 150,000 years ago spread out from Africa to people the rest of the earth. It's a mistake to think that there was only one African diaspora, that the African diaspora is associated only with the slave trade. Africa was the cradle of humankind, and that consisted of millions of individuals as well who went up to Europe and who went to Asia. What is important about this movement is that it was not coerced, and it had nothing to do with racial um, prejudice of one sort or the other. Si on limite notre l'apport africain à ces routes de l'esclavage, on commet une erreur historique, une erreur humaine et une erreur idéologique. Et c'est dans ce sens que revoir cette histoire, c'est la refonder, c'est la refonder dans cette vision, je dirais sur la très longue durée, la vision humaine du substrat africain de notre société. The massive long-distance deportation of enslaved Africans began more than 1,500 years ago with the trans-Saharan slave trade and the trade around the Red Sea and the Indian Ocean. One of the particularities of the trade of the slaves in the Sea Indian is that the population civil was not only composed of African slaves. There was also a trade of slaves from the East and the South Asian and the South Asian. For example, Au Mascareil, il a été estimé qu'environ 13% des esclaves étaient issus soit de l'Inde ou du Sud-Est asiatique et on connaît en outre l'importance des esclaves malais au Cap de Bonne-Espérance sous l'occupation néerlandaise. Il faut aussi souligner l'importance de Madagascar dans les réseaux de traite établis dans l'océan Indien, d'où l'importance des éléments culturels malgaches dans la culture des îles créoles de l'océan Indien. East Africans from the Horn in the north to Mozambique in the south also migrated to or were taken to various parts of India where they are collectively known as Siddhis. Uh, our people are brought to India at 800 years ago. We are come as a slaves, as a soldier and as a businessman. This was the one place in the world where black Africans ruled over non-Africans outside of Africa. And I found, in fact, that there were several places where this happened. Africans were also found throughout the vast Ottoman Empire that lasted from the 16th to the 19th century. Well, we're talking about all the Middle East. Um, that is to say, uh, what is today Syria, Lebanon, Egypt uh, is very important in this case. North Africa, except Morocco. Morocco was never Ottoman. And the Balkans. The Ottomans enslaved both Caucasians, so they had white slaves, and they uh, enslaved Africans. There are descendants of uh, Africans in Turkey today, 
uh, we know of um, African communities along the western coast of Turkey, that's the Aegean coast, and also along the Mediterranean coast. The Europeans who enslaved Africans in their colonies in the Americas had actually begun enslaving them in Europe in the mid-15th century, more than 50 years before developing the transatlantic slave trade. Scientists invented the concept of race and developed theories of racial hierarchy and of the congenital inferiority of blacks, which became the basis of European racism. Africans were said to have no history, no culture, no civilization. In no instance were the other groups racially stigmatized by the enslavement. Whereas um, with the enslaved African population, this stigmatization became a global phenomenon in and of itself. The system of slavery that Europeans created in the Americas was unique in that it became very quickly racialized. The millions of Africans torn away from the continent during almost 400 years and their generations of descendants were not defined as human beings. The French and Spanish Black Codes, laws that were written to regulate slavery, defined them as movable property and the United States Constitution characterized them as three-fifths of a person. Much of Atlantic slavery took the form of a triangular trade. Merchandise produced in Europe was shipped to Africa to be exchanged for Africans to be shipped to the Americas to produce raw materials to be shipped to Europe. Durante todo o tempo, enquanto houve escravidão, houve luta contra a escravidão. E que foi um sistema que se reproduziu, tendo como um conteúdo necessário ao próprio escravismo, o uso da violência permanente contra a população negra. Então, resistência é muito isso. É, é, é recuperar e quebrar este silêncio é, que foi construído em torno da passividade ou da aceitação da escravidão pelos escravos ou pelos africanos. The first great African slave revolt historically documented took place in Iraq. Known as the Zanj Revolt, it lasted from 869 to 883. Thousands of African slaves from East Africa working in the salt marshes in southern Iraq joined forces with other groups to revolt against slavery and for social changes. The Zanj rebels even established their own state with its capital called Al Muqtara, and during 14 years, seriously threatened and challenged the reign of the Abbasid Caliphate. Haiti became the world's first black republic and the first republic in the Americas to abolish slavery. Although many countries that benefited from African slavery still avoid dealing with this sensitive issue, some explicitly denying that it was a crime, at the 2001 United Nations World Conference Against Racism, Racial Discrimination, Xenophobia and Related Forms of Intolerance, delegates from around the world also declared the slave trade and slavery a crime against humanity. We acknowledge that slavery and the slave trade, including the transatlantic slave trade, were appalling tragedies in the history of humanity, not only because of their abhorrent barbarism, but also in terms of their magnitude, organized nature, and especially their negation of the essence of the victims. Despite the less than enviable way in which Africans left the continent to spread across the world in the second diaspora, they became the first globalized peoples of the modern era, a human and cultural link between Africa, the continent of human origins, and Asia and the Middle East, Europe, and all of the Americas. Forced to recreate themselves in strange lands among unknown people under intolerable circumstances, these Africans and their descendants triumphed over an intensity and duration of oppression unprecedented in human history. 
UNESCO's Slave Root Project is contributing to a better knowledge of slavery as a tragedy that concerns the whole of humanity. <laughs> By understanding this silent chapter of world history, we can better grasp the genealogy binding the slave trade to other crimes against humanity and new forms of enslavement.